Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. I'm so glad that you've joined me here and you will love my guest today who is Dr. Uh, Isabella Wentz and she is an internationally acclaimed thyroid specialist and licensed pharmacist who's dedicated her career to addressing the root causes of autoimmune thyroid disease. After being diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, that's a big word, <laughs> in 2009, uh, Dr. Wentz is the author of the New York Times bestselling patient guide Hashimoto, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, lifestyle interventions for finding and treating the root cause of the forthcoming protocol-based book, Hashimoto's Protocol, a 90-day plan for reversing thyroid symptoms and getting your life back. So she's an amazing woman. Um, she's, uh, you know, a, a patient advocate, a researcher, clinician, educator. She's committed to raising awareness on how to overcome autoimmune disease, uh, thyroid disease, through the Thyroid Secret documentary, documentary series. And um, this is uh, something that we're going to be talking about. So really looking forward to uh, you hearing from her as well as my ask. I get to ask all the questions, so I'm excited too about what I get to learn. So welcome. So glad you're here, Isabella. Trisha, thank you so much for having me. I'm a big fan of your work and really appreciate having this opportunity to connect. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've loved seeing all the amazing things that you're doing in the world. I mean, you really have blown the doors open on thyroid, you know, Hashimoto's disease and, and all, you know, all its consequences, you know, and that's really why I wanted you to have, wanted you to be here talking uh, on the Heal Your Hunger show because so many people who struggle with weight and with emotional eating do have underlying uh, problems, uh, you know, with their body physiologically that are causing their downfall. And uh, I'd say the number one, uh, problem would be thyroid uh, issues, wouldn't you say? You know, absolutely. And and it's one of the, the challenges in people with thyroid disease is by the time they get to the point where they have a thyroid condition, it's because a lot of different things have happened along the way. And one of the key things that can happen is there's a big disconnect between our own um, intuition, the way we would eat intuitively and what our body is sort of craving or what our body wants and so or what we think the body wants and right. so there's a big kind of disconnect between those two and you know thyroid disease can make us um, struggle with our weight it can make us struggle with our mood um, it can make us struggle with our energy levels and a lot of times um, women who have thyroid disease will also have challenges where they're not making enough stomach acid so then they'll be drawn to other certain kinds of foods that perhaps are a little bit easier to digest, but that also set off a blood sugar response that make the foods more addicting. It's such yeah. a vicious cycle, isn't it? You know, I'm just thinking about how uh, I'm sure you know the as as emotional eaters, the foods that we actually are do, are eating can also can it cause thyroid disease as well. You know, at thyroid disease, there are certain foods that are very much triggering and, um, and or exacerbating depending on the person. So for some people, eating foods that are based in gluten, so wheat okay. products, rye products, these foods can actually be a trigger for thyroid disease. About 20% of the time when we get off of these foods, the person can go into remission and they no longer have uh, manifestations of the thyroid condition. But... Um, in other cases, in the rest of the people, I would say probably another 70%, these foods actually make them feel worse in the long term. In the short term, maybe this is what they crave, but in the long term, every time they eat this food, then their body is recognizing the food as a foreign invader and starts to attack not just the food, but also their thyroid gland. And this is a um, common struggle where women, um, we know that this is a very, very important trigger and root cause or exacerbating factor. But some people just have a very hard time um, getting off of those foods. Of course. Yeah, it really is so hard. So 
Uh, and I love that you're all about the root cause because that's me as well. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, let's look beyond the symptom. You know, we can we can treat symptoms all day long and never really get over them because we're not going deep enough. And I just love, you know, what you do because you are about all the, you know, what's really going on and the deeper causes and also the lifestyle changes because, Obviously, there's no magic bullet for these problems, and it really is so systemic and, and, and systemic to the whole way that we live. And that's, you know, again, from where I'm coming from, if you're trying to overcome emotional eating, it's not about a diet. It's so much about the choices you're making, the way you're thinking, you know, your perspective on life. Uh, how you're processing your emotions. I mean, so many different aspects of life and how we respond to life are making us sick or making us crave or, you know, whatever the case may be. So um, talk about your new uh, documentary series like because this is an amazing awareness, you know, generator for the world. And the world doesn't understand Hashimoto's. I know that. I mean, I barely understand it myself. So I really want to know more about this amazing documentary. So I decided to create the thyroid secret documentary to raise awareness about thyroid conditions because um, on average, most women go for about 10 years before they're diagnosed. Wow. In, in my experience, um, I was... I was having panic attacks. I was putting on weight without changing anything. So even my sweatpants got tight. I was sleeping for 12, 13, 14 hours without feeling rested. And this went on for almost a decade. So I just kept losing parts of myself and my world kept getting smaller and smaller. And every year it's like I got more symptoms and more things were taken from me. And I would go to the doctor every year and I never got the right kind of testing done. Um, most doctors will do a test for your TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. And this is something that's going to be um, normal for probably the first 10 years of when you have a thyroid disorder. And if you ask them, I actually had um, a, one of my colleagues, I was telling her to get her thyroid tested. And she said she asked her doctor to test for thyroid antibodies, which are um, the markers of thyroid disease that are elevated for 10, 15, 20 years before the traditional tests will pick it up and her doctor flat out refused and said, what functional medicine doctor have you been talking to? This is, this is nonsense. But the reality of it is most people, they struggle with this and they're told that they're, that they're um, lazy, they're crazy, or that, they're, you know, that they need to put the fork down. But the truth is, is that the thyroid slows down our metabolism and then we're going to be more tired. We're going to have changes in our mood that we might be depressed. In some cases, we might be anxious. And we're going to have a harder time um, losing weight as well as keeping, um, keeping our current weight because it's, it slows down our metabolism. It's basically our body is saying, um, in the case of thyroid disease, our body's saying, hey, we need to conserve resources. We need to slow things down. And a lot of people are very, very frustrated with this and oftentimes undiagnosed. So we have the portion of that is about getting the right diagnosis and raising awareness about all of these different ways that thyroid disease can manifest. I've seen people hospitalized for bipolar disorder, for psychotic disorders, you know, having all of these um, things like fertility issues or weight struggles and, and nobody thinks to test their thyroid. Now, the other part of it is I want to raise awareness about all the things we can do to take charge of our own health and recover our life. Um, things like nutrient deficiencies could be letting our thyroid gland know that we're not in a safe place and that could cause us to slow down our metabolism. Things like um, history of trauma in our lives, this could be telling our um, thyroid gland that we're not in a safe place and that could slow down our metabolism. And Kind of going back to the root causes, um, one of the main root causes of why a person eventually does get diagnosed with thyroid disease is because their body um, feels like there's something unsafe in this world and, and the body then will slow down our metabolism. Isn't that fascinating? Down the thyroid. That is so fascinating. Our, our bodies are so smart, you know, I mean, there's so much, so much going on that doesn't meet the eye or even the doctor's eye. Um, I, you know, I, I relate so much to this because um, 
I'd say it was uh, about 12 years ago, uh, my husband, Roy, whom you know, he uh, came, he had a thyroid disorder and he didn't know about it. And so he started becoming anxious and depressed. And, you know, it's part of that whole HP access, I guess. And so he was, you know, alternating between or HPA X, I don't know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> oh, um, so anyway, he, he started having these symptoms and it was like, I mean, here he is a spiritual healer helping people with these symptoms, you know, more on an emotional, spiritual level, but he started having terrible anxiety and he had a history of anxiety that he healed from, but when it was starting to come back, it was so scary for him. And we were in the Northeast at the time, and again, this is 2004, um, and we were driving literally all over the Northeast. I mean, we were in four or five different states, which you can do easier on, you know, in the Northeast, obviously, there's smaller states, but still, we were driving everywhere looking for holistic doctors because when he would go to conventional endocrinologist, they would literally act like it was in his head or they'd give him sleeping pills or want to give him antidepressants. He's like, I'm not taking meds. Like this is th this, there is something wrong that is, has a deeper cause that I need to get to the bottom of. And it was really hard to find some doctors who really understood what was going on. But that ended up being so much of the, the issue is his thyroid was off because he'd gotten sick and it sort of whacked out his whole endocrine system. So, and adrenals, obviously adrenals are connected to that so it turns out he had that chronic fatigue and and I mean it's just a snowball effect so we really lived this and that's how we got to understand what you know what the symptoms are and how deep they run and he was able to heal thank goodness when we got the right diagnosis and and care and and information and supplements and everything else like that so I mean obviously I think in general holistic doctors have come a long way I mean doctors in general right I mean is there is there is there more I mean I with your help they're gonna be more aware but I mean hopefully 12 13 years later it, there is more awareness or less I don't know if you can say ob obtuseness <laughs> that's a word but what's your take on that I think it's getting a lot better so in the last five years since I started this work I've seen a lot of changes and a lot more awareness about um, the root causes. And so like in your husband's case, sometimes you can have an infection that is a triggering event for thyroid disease. And then, you know, left to its own devices, if you were to work with a conventional doctor, they would just say, okay, well, you've got this infection or they would say you've got this thyroid condition and they would never even think about the infection as a triggering cause. They would never even think of doing anything for that infection. They would just say, you've got thyroid disease, let's put you on thyroid hormones. And I don't have anything against thyroid hormones and I feel like they're very helpful. And definitely in the advanced stages when you have a lot of damage to the thyroid gland, when you've had long-standing thyroid disease, the hormones are absolutely you know, a savior and, and can be um, quite necessary. But we also wanna figure out, okay, what is causing the thyroid to be destroyed? It's going to be the immune system and what's setting off this immune system attack. And in some cases, it could be an infection. So whenever we have a viral infection that gets into the thyroid glands, this can actually set off a cascade where the immune system tries to kill off the infection, but instead it attacks, you know, it attacks the, whole, the infection and the home of the infection, which ends up being the thyroid gland. So it's really important to look for those root causes and try to figure out, okay, why is my body out of balance? And Symptoms like anxiety are really, really good signs from your body that something is off, that there's something not right, and you know it could be an infection. It could be because um, because of a toxin that's in your environment. It could be because you're not getting enough nutrients, or you know it could be something as simple as stress, or not even speaking your truth, or not 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 letting people know what's inside of you and, and what's bothering you. And I feel like the thyroid gland is really our environmental sensing gland because um, it really is very tuned in to, uh, to our environment and whatever is going on. Um, th autoimmune thyroid disease is the most common type of autoimmune disease. And thyroid disease affects about 28% of our population. And I believe it's so common because it's, it's sort of like that the thyroid gland is sort of that canary in the coal mine that's very tuned into our environment and it's the first one to go 
when there's a significant amount of toxicity or stress or um, deficiency within around us. Wow, it's so sensitive. 28%, that's, that's really high. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Wow. It's very high, and women are more affected. Um, one of my colleagues talks about people who have anxiety. About 50% of them are affected. Um, I think you know Trudy Scott. She's wonderful. Uh -huh. And then whenever we have people with weight challenges or depression, they're going to have a higher likelihood of having thyroid disease. Wow, because they have so, I mean, for so many reasons, but a lot of it is the, the toxic load, you know? I mean, people who are overeating are never overeating salads, you know? It's always, it's always junk food and, you know, carbs and sugar and, and things that, you know, fats or things that are, can absolutely make us sick. So that's just amazing. Um, talk to me a little bit about just in general, because this is one of the things when Roy got sick, we really didn't understand the endocrine system and how it does. I mean, it regulates our body temperature and our, our mood. And obviously we talked about depression and that kind of thing, but it's so incredible, the endocrine system and, and how much, and the thyroid specifically and how much it regulates our body and our functioning. Mm -hmm. The thyroid gland has a very important role and it's to manage our metabolism and it's to basically take the food that we eat and convert it into energy and dictate how, what our body temperature is going to be. Now when you think about this, um, this tiny little gland impacts every single process within the body and there's thyroid hormone receptors in every cell. This is why um, it's very you know, kind of confusing when you have thyroid symptoms and you can be misdiagnosed with a lot of different things because the symptoms can be across the board. The most common ones that people are going to see are going to be fatigue. So it's like you're just like you said with Roy, he had chronic fatigue and it was just like tired all the time. Everything is a chore. You're sleeping a lot and you can't get out of bed and it's like you just want to take a nap. You sort of stop caring about the world as much as you used to. And your motivation kind of goes down. You just be kind of sort of sluggish, right? Sure, yeah. And then um, that translates to our metabolism. Our metabolism becomes sluggish. So we could be eating exactly the same amount of food as our identical twin without thyroid disease and exercising just as much, sleeping just as much. But our thyroid gland, when it slows down the metabolism, you slow down your basal metabolic rate. So that means that you are going to be surviving on very few calories. So at baseline, without doing anything, you're going to be burning very few amount of calories. Now, of course, this can be protective in times of famine, and that's sort of how it, it is now that we have so many, so many people with thyroid diseases because we have these ancient bodies, an ancient set of genes that is sort of um, not really fully adapted to our current environment with all the stressors. And... Um, you know, to your point, when people eat a lot of carbs and a lot of um, processed foods that are more common in binge eating, um, this actually sends a message to the body that we're not getting enough food, that there's not enough food in our environment because those foods are so empty of nutrients, a caveman or a cave woman would not recognize them as food, right? Mm -hmm. And so our bodies can be tuned into that. And then we're looking at another big common set of symptoms is going to be um, on the brain. So this might be brain fog. This might be forgetfulness. This might be, um, you know, the apathy or depression. And in some cases it's anxiety or feeling angry or feeling irritable. And then, you know, looking at the other body systems, we're going to have pain. I had carpal tunnel in both of my arms, which is not fun. Um, wow. we have hair loss and cold intolerance, um, loss of the eyebrows and infertility. So it's a whole host of different symptoms that can manifest and, when you look at just one of these symptoms, standalone symptoms, it's like you can think of other things to explain them away, right? But you, I really encourage people if they have just even one of those symptoms to go and get their thyroid tested because um, not everybody will have all the symptoms. And it's really easy to miss thyroid disease just on looking at your symptoms. Absolutely. Um, what do people do if they have a conventional doctor who isn't really as clued in on, you know, the, the, the subtleties of this condition, what should they ask their doctor in the testing? Because doctors won't do the full, you know, testing. I'd definitely like to see the TSH test. So that's um, kind of the conventional test. That's 
what they'll usually do if they ask you, if you ask them. Mm-hmm. But you shouldn't just do that. You should also do TSH, and then you should also do, do thyroid antibodies, so TPO antibodies and TG antibodies. Now, these antibodies are going to be present in um, about 80% of people with um, Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid, an autoimmune thyroid condition. And so basically what's happening is the immune system starts to recognize the thyroid gland as a foreign invader, and then over time destroys the thyroid gland, leading to hypothyroidism. And this is actually what causes 97 to 99% of cases of hypothyroidism in the United States. Oh, wow. So most people, they're told they have a sluggish thyroid. They actually have Hashimoto's. Um, and the antibody tests are really the key to figuring out if, if this is something that you have. Um, beyond that, I also recommend looking at thyroid ultrasounds. So um, a thyroid ultrasound may uncover some changes on the thyroid gland that could be interfering with thyroid function, such as nodules, or even um, if parts of the thyroid gland have been destroyed or impaired. So really, anybody who has any um, challenges with, with weight or fatigue or mood They should have those tests and not just the TSH test because as we mentioned before, the TSH test will be normal for the first 10, 15, sometimes 20 years of thyroid disease and we need to have the antibody test to figure out if this is something that's going on within our bodies. Wow, that's great advice. I really appreciate that. What are some of the lifestyle interventions um, that do help people? And I, I, I know you cover so many, and they're so aligned with you know what's going in my book is my Heal Your Hunger book, and so um, and and it's it's not it, it it's very uncommon or I'd say a little surprising to hear you know a doctor and a ph- pharmacist saying, oh, you know, you need to think about the thoughts you're thinking or, you know, past trauma or whatever and how that's actually affecting your body. But of course, we do know it does. So uh, tell me about some of the, I, I'd say the spectrum, uh, you don't name them all, obviously, they, they can get your book for that. But a few that do kind of go in, they're in different places on the spectrum of lifestyle changes. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the key principles I recommend for everybody are doing supporting your liver, and that helps you detoxify, supporting your adrenals, so this is going to help your stress response, and then supporting your gut. Um, so part of the liver support is when we have a person with, um, with thyroid disease, a lot of times they're going to be very toxic, and the toxicity within them is going to be causing a lot of symptoms. And so what we're going to start doing is we're going to start removing some of the everyday toxins that they're exposed to to lower that toxic burden, and then we're gonna be um, helping them clear out some of the toxins, and that's gonna be using targeted foods and supplements. Um, so just real simple, some, some solutions could be getting off a fluoride filter for your water system. So fluoride can actually suppress thyroid function, and if we're drinking it constantly, we're suppressing our thyroid gland on a daily basis. We're giving ourselves very small doses of thyroid toxins um, triclosan, which has recently been banned by the FDA by our, um, because of its thyroid disrupting properties, this is something that I recommend removing. It's found in antibacterial soaps and it's found in toothpaste. Now, most people, they, um, you know, they might still have some of those antibacterial soaps around and they're still um, using them and every time you use them, you're going to be potentially um, affecting your thyroid function. Um, So switching out your soaps as well as your toothpaste because triclosan and fluoride are often found in your toothpaste. These can make tremendous differences in thyroid function and how you feel. Then we're looking at um, the adrenal support, which is basically, when you think about it, is being really, really kind to yourself um, and helping your stress response and kind of lower that inflammatory um, stress cascade within your body. So we're thinking about doing things like sleeping enough. So I recommend if if you can sleeping for 10 to 12 hours for seven to 14 days straight, just giving yourself that opportunity to sleep. Um, You want to cut out caffeine during that time because caffeine can push us to basically stay up when we shouldn't. Then we're thinking about um, speaking positive things positive things to yourself and positive mantras with autoimmune disease it's you attacking you right and when you're um when you have these negative thought patterns that's the same thing it's you attacking you 
And it's not a far stretch to say that people who have these negative patterns influence their body to also attack itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we're talking about blood sugar balance. So how do you um, how do you eat in a way that sends your body signals that we're safe and that we're not in a famine and that we're not you know you know binging on food back in cave woman days would likely be something that was occurring only because there was a scarcity of food, right? There weren't all of these complex things that we have in our lives now. And so these are some ways to send those safety signals to your body and let your body know that you're safe and you're not under attack. And then the thyroid gland does not need to slow things down, that we're good on our own and we could run a healthy metabolism. And then we're supporting gut function. So we're thinking about which foods are going to be potentially problematic we're thinking um, gluten and dairy are the most common for thyroid disorders. And then we're looking at digestive enzymes to help you digest some of that food. Um, one of the things we mentioned is people with thyroid disease often have low stomach acid. When you have low stomach acid, this, this is going to mean that you're not going to be able to digest proteins properly, which are building blocks for your body. And so people who have low stomach acid are often going to be drawn more to carbohydrates which then send us on a blood sugar cascade because um, you know you can't break down protein for fuel. And so when you start digestive enzymes, you actually start getting more benefit from your protein, you start getting more lean muscle mass, and you don't get all of those cravings um, for sweets and for sugar. And that, that's something that can be very, very helpful. Um, we also do, at that point, we also recommend amino acid therapy where you do some amino acids and those can help um, slow down some of the some of the cravings because and in, in you know from a thyroid perspective some of the cravings can actually be caused because you're just not getting enough nutrients because you're not breaking down your foods properly that's awesome thank you so much that was so much that people can take you know and and use for getting healthy right now thank you that's just great um I do want to know more details about your documentary series. So will you tell me about that? Of course. Um, so we have nine episodes and we start off by going through all of the different types of misdiagnoses that people have gone through. Um, so we talk about um, fertility, mental health issues, weight challenges, um, being fatigued. And then we start moving into what are some of the solutions and what are some of the triggers and we cover toxins, we cover um, food as a trigger and a solution, we cover um, the gut health and infections, and we cover um, stress and trauma as potential triggers. So we go through this in the documentary series, and then we also have um, an episode where we talk about all of the different helpful things um, that people have implemented on their own. So we have 100 experts and then 60 um, patient stories of people who were able to recover their health with thyroid disease um, and various ways. You know, we have um, different things that have worked for, for different people so people can really tune in and see what part of that is true for them and what fits for them. 100 experts, that's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, so just let's talk about that. I'm just absolutely curious on putting it together and the interviews that you did and the places you went and like where'd you go and how long did it take and how did you stay sane and in self care <laughs> mode throughout? <laughs> <laughs> it was definite, definitely a challenge, right? Yeah. Um, so we started recording in February of 2016 and then we went on for. Um, Basically, we continued recording until um, October of last year. Okay. And then we went into production mode, and finally the, the, the documentary was finalized in January. But part of it was... Like, um, just, now, like just now, right? Just now. Just, we okay. just finally Holy moly. finalized it at the end of January. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. It's been quite the journey. I went to about... Um, I don't even know how many cities, to be honest with you. I was on... I was in, you know, Los Los Angeles, San Francisco, and then New York, and um, Chicago, and Portland, and um, Atlanta, and Nashville, and you know, really went all around the country, wow. all around the U.S. to meet with different experts and patients. 
to get their perspectives and to um, share some of these innovative therapies as well uh -huh. um, for thyroid disease. So we talked about some of the fundamentals that people need to do to recover their health. And this was things like um, making sure that they're, they've got their nutrition aligned, that their stress response, and they're not giving themselves toxins every day. And then we talked about some of the more innovative approaches, like, for example, cold laser therapy or stem cell therapy that can be really helpful with thyroid disease, too. Um, but it's been quite the journey. So I um, learned how to be a movie director through the process. Uh -huh. So I ended up having to um, take, there was 167 interviews total. Oh, my and goodness. So then we got, we got them all transcribed, and then it was sort of like a big jigsaw puzzle, right, of trying to put together a storyline out of all of the different interviews and, and, and taking various kind of thoughts and phrases from each person to create um, storylines for nine different episodes. And so we've got, I'm really, really proud of how it turned out. We've got really actionable steps, and then I've got um, helpful kind of funny stories along the way, too, and then inspiration, and it's been just um, so well received. We had over 100,000 people tune in for our sneak peek, um, and during that time, we've gotten thousands and thousands of thank you letters and comments and transformations that occurred when people were watching the series. That is just beautiful. Gosh, congratulations. What a, what a beautiful contribution to the world. I mean... You're definitely being used, you know, spirit is guiding you to enlighten the world. And I just really thank you for that. Thanks for your service to the world because to see people suffer and not, I mean, the worst thing is not knowing why and having other people not know why and uh, know in the bottom, bottom of your heart that there's got to be a reason that it's, you're not just crazy, you know, you're not just lazy, as you said, it's, it's really, there is a root cause. So that's just so beautiful. And also, I, I, I know you and I know your past book and I know how much amazing information just about health. I mean, we're really talking about preventive health and, and how to be healthier. So if somebody, you know, tuning in thinks, well, I don't have a thyroid problem, as you said, we don't know because it could be uh, in the works, you know, 10 years prior. Um, but also everything you're talking about is how to prevent having a thyroid problem and how to prevent cancer and diabetes and all the other things that, you know, we can be susceptible to when we aren't taking care of our bodies, you know, and our minds and our hearts. So I just really encourage everybody to tune into that. And you can do so, you can go to the show notes here on the show in order to get that information. And we would really encourage you to do that. Um, Isabella's book will be out right after that. So your amazing new book. Uh, which will be a bestseller, I know. And um, and also you have a gift for everybody right now to uh, access as well. Do you want to tell them what that is? Yeah, definitely. So thyroidpharmacist.com slash gift is where I have um, some tools and resources to get people started right away. So we talked a little bit about the whole um, safety theory of what happens when a person, why a person develops thyroid disease. And it's usually because their body senses that they're unsafe in one way or another. One of the ways where we can send those safety signals to our body is by getting enough nutrients on board. And we can do this with supplements and eating nutrient-dense foods um, and also improving our digestion because then we extract more nutrients from the foods that we're eating. So I have a digestion and depletions guide for people that um, they can just get started on right away um, to start sending some of those safety signals to their bodies. Mm -hmm. And then I have a um, diet, a quick thyroid diet starting guide, as well as some recipes that can help people on their journeys. And these are blood sugar balancing recipes that are um, free of the common foods that are reactive for people with thyroid disease. And this is something just to get you started on the journey as as you you know work through as you work through um, I'm repairing your thyroid function. You'll start seeing really tremendous improvements in all elements of your health and your life. Um, you know, Trish, what you said with um, being able to be out in the world and serving your purpose and having your mission out in the world. I think both you and I, if we were kind of bound by the chains of what we 
were challenged with, we wouldn't have been, we would not be able to be out in the world doing the work that we're doing. And, and really that's, I know that's your hope and that's my hope for people in the world that they are no longer bound by um, their health challenges and emotional challenges and that they become free of them so that they can live the lives they're meant to live, right? Absolutely. I'm into that. I love it. Thank you so much. And uh, for people tuning in, I'll also have that link for the free gift in the show notes as well so you can check it out. Thank you so much for being with me here and being with everybody. It's just been so nice. And I just look forward to all the great uh, information and can't wait to watch the series. And uh, just thank you. Thank you for everything you do and who you are. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. I really appreciate your contribution to the world. It's, you're changing so many lives. Thank you. Right back at you. You take care. Thank you. You too. If you enjoyed this show and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.